All right, we've had a look at what impacts the business needs to understand is happening in their company. And uh, we talked about that Planet Equipment Wellness is all about the how to do things, because it's the how to find the one best way that we're looking to achieve. Planet Equipment Wellness is built around a particular, I guess, business model. And uh, the whole point uh, is to understand what the business has to do to make the machines reliable by making the parts reliable. So this model we use is the stress to process models. Parts stress to business process. What processes do we develop, uh, design, develop and install that will reduce the stress on the parts? When I reduce stress, I naturally get reliability. So my upside down triangle here is all about understanding that we're going to begin at the bottom. Parts, uh, part by part in our equipment, the parts that are at high risk, we're going to find those. We know that the stress is induced from only two ways. One is the distortion caused by poor installation or forces going in the wrong places. The other is by degradation, the bad use of the equipment, the misunderstanding of the correct way to use that machine. So degradation management is an operational issue. Distortion management is an installation and maintenance issue. So right away, we're into a scenario where the two teams are going to work together across the business cycle to deliver low stress parts. We also want our guys to solve the problems. When there's a failure, learn from that, improve the machine. The Japanese say, a new machine is in the worst condition it should ever be. Because when you have a machine, you learn what it needs to be done to it to be a better machine. And you do those things. So we have this configuration, parts stress rolling up to business process. And the whole point up here is to install the how, the one best way to achieve this result. So as I learn what needs to be done, I roll it up into procedures, into documentation, into company policy, into company practices, into company training, and lock it into the system with ACE3Ts, built around the ISO 9001 framework. So I wanted to go through this in a bit more detail, just to explain the sense of approaching it that way. If I start at the top and build my business processes without understanding what their outcomes will be, and if the outcomes are meant to be reliability and low maintenance cost and high operation uptime, and I start from the top here, how, how do I know what, what the pathway is? I can build the business process that I think is okay from this level here, and I'll fight you to death to follow my process. But the point is it's never right. It can't be right because you've built at this level without understanding that the outcomes will produce what you actually want. So I turn the whole thing upside down and say, what do we really want? Well, we really want to have no failing machines. We want to have no failure. We want to have no risk of failure. We want to make sure we do the right things that ensure it is always reliable. So what are the right things to do? Well, distortion prevention, degradation prevention. Remove the cause of failure. Who does that? Well, operations guys can manage operational stresses. My maintenance guys can handle uh, installation and correction of, of failure problems. Um, how do we do that? Well, we write procedures. Operational precision, uh, ACE3 procedures. Installation, ACE3 pr procedures. And my maintenance strategies? Well, yes, we're going to have strategies, precision maintenance, preventative maintenance, predictive maintenance, done the right way. But what is the right way? Well, the how will be described. We're going to explain exactly how to get a tight distribution at every single step, for every single job, for every single person, for every single process. How else can you do it? I'm going to script the movie. I want a movie where in five years' time we are the world leaders, everybody's out there having a great time, building a fantastic company. Let's make a movie. What part do you play? Well, I'm the fitter. How do you assist? Well, yeah, I, I, I make machines better. I make them more reliable. Great. What do you do? Well, I haven't got the script yet. Oh, let me, let's write the script together. This is what you do. Learn the script. Let's now make the world a stage. Let's become the actors that create this company that we all want to get into. And this is the how we do that. So we roll up from stress into the activities required. Um, we involve our suppliers if need be. We know that a lot of problems are coming in from outside the gate. They're being given to us. We're going to have to go and control that. And if lean practices produce better results, I'm not going to wait 
a year or two, I'm going to start getting that in tomorrow. I need a quality system. I need a, a, a documented system that is the one best way that everybody in the company can access and can improve. And up here, we then have the processes of the company. Yes, human uh, capability management, the HR guys play a part. So when they hire somebody, can this guy deliver this? Does he know anything about precision maintenance? Well, don't hire him because I want to get a guy that can precision maintain. But there's nobody out in the marketplace. Well, find the best guy, we'll put him through the school. We'll teach him what to do. Uh, knowledge management, what's the important knowledge that prevents parts failure? Well, that not, we know that, yeah, we, we worked it out. So now the guys that are doing the uh, business process improvement, we can say, hey, are we doing the right things? You're business process guys, and are we doing the right things that produce this? No, we're not yet. Okay, well, improve the business. In what way? Well, we're going to achieve these outcomes. So that's the idea of the stress to process. Parts, stress to business processes that produce these outcomes. And so we roll up to do the right things. And we know what the right things are because we worked out here in our detailed analysis, in our, in our um, reliability center, in our reliability cause analysis uh, requirements, we know what we have to do. Now I'm gonna do those things intentionally make it part of the business processes and lock them into place with the ACE three twos. So yes, uh, and everybody's involved of course. This is business wide and life cycle wide up here. So it'll be forever more that we do these things and we challenge ourselves to always bring that tolerance and bring that in tighter and tighter and tighter. Because as we get better and better and better and hold our quality more accurately, the better the results, the more certain the results will be. Again, uh, being the end of, uh, towards the end of the course, I'm, I want to have some summary type concepts. So again, a, a single picture of, of I guess, the, the idea behind what Plant Wellness is trying to achieve for the company. So begin with our parts, parts list, which, are the, which parts are at risk? Uh, where will the stress come from on these parts? Is it a problem? Does it matter if this part breaks? If it doesn't matter, it's fine. But if it matters if that part breaks, how do we prevent it from failing? I don't want to repair it. I don't mind maintaining it to ensure it has uh, the right environment that it lives in, but I want to minimise my, my failures. So we recognise what stresses are being caused. We know um, across the life cycle of that equipment when it's being used, there'll be wear out issues, there'll be intentional ageing by its use, there'll be stress induced problems, and there'll be human error. And I've got to address all of those. Which ones are worth addressing? Which ones are, are where the payback is? Well, it depends if these things reduce the risk of the breakdown. If they reduce the risk and there's money in doing this, let's do it. If there's no sense, no value, no point, let's not do it. But again, the, the risk and the dollars gained from that risk reduction action is what makes it worthwhile for us to do that. From all that analysis, we come up with our, our processes that will be in place in the business, whether it's maintenance operations, whether it's um, corporate wide, whether it's engineering. So that's how we end up populating these levels here. All that information, that learning, those requirements, the standards, the quality controls, the ACE3Ts roll on up right across our business and across our suppliers and perhaps even across our customers. Because if our customers can tell us hey, if you did it this way, we'd buy, we'd like that better. Um, it might be smart to listen to the customer and bring the better idea into our business. So yes, just a one pager of, of the concept. Um, in a company that hasn't done this yet, that's a fair bit of work. It's, it's not gonna be easy to do. So we don't wanna tackle the whole company at once. It's just a mountain, it's beyond us. We wanna do this in a test area, in a section of plant, a particular asset or even a small part of a small operating plant that, that's a, a reasonable size to work with. We don't want to take years to get to this level uh, to prove it actually works. We want to do this in a few months to be able to do the input analysis, to make the decisions, do the justification financially, work out what processes to improve and change and document within a reasonable time to then apply this, make it work, see how it works, ensure our data is confirming this improvement in quality and sustaining the, the distribution, then we have real evidence in our customer's workplace that this stuff works for them. Once we've got 
it working on one, we snowball it to number two, then number three, and hopefully eventually it's clear that it needs to go business-wide very, very fast. Reliability improvement has been around, um, heck, I guess forever, ever since machines were built. We've always been trying to build uh, better machines and make them more reliable. Many models out there of how to go about uh, improving reliability, this is one of them, the, uh, the, the wheel of progress, and it's an eight-step activity. What are the opportunities for, fa for to improve? So we're looking at failures in, in the historical failures. Which ones do we wish to remove? Uh, pick the opportunities, find the root causes, develop solutions, uh, select the solutions that are going to work, test them in some sort of pilot trial. If it's good, we implement. If it's not good, we go back to here and look at a better solution, uh, implement that and monitor. You know, get the data to prove the intention is actually being delivered. Nothing magical, all very straightforward stuff. Um, so we're not going to change that intent. We're just perhaps going to say, is it effective? Is this style of approach effective? Because what that leads to is um, additional activities the plant needs to do, where the plant has its own processes and its own work requirements. We, if we're going to use a reliability improvement process, we then have to gather the data, uh, build off that information into our choices, uh, do the analysis, choose the application, test it, implement it. So we end up having uh, another loop that the plant has to run with. This is what most companies do. They actually introduce this additional uh, reliability improvement loop in their business. And over time, they work this loop and work this loop and work this loop, improving things as they go along. So the model works. It, the trouble that I find is it just takes an awful lot, a lot of time. So yeah, this is uh, another way of seeing that. Here's, here's the rat race, as I call it, you know, the world that we never win in. It's always a headless chicken place, uh, and it goes on year after year, breakdown after breakdown. We just can't get over that hump. So we do a change program, uh, an improvement program. Most companies focus on maintenance, thinking maintenance is the answer, um, and they'll do planning, better planning, have a look and do condition monitoring, buy thermography cameras, buy vibration analyzers, send guys to training, build a bigger group, um, and of course, find the root cause, which, which we do, we'll find the root cause. Uh, we'll make sure the maintenance is being done because if we don't do the maintenance, the parts will break down. So yeah, the right things are being done, except you know, two years go by, three years go by. Eventually the operation gets better because things are more reliable. Then we can begin analyzing things scientifically, but by then it's four or five years down the track. And so the whole thing takes a long, long time. You know, we'll get there. And that's how the guys that were dogs got there today. They, they, roll the wheel of progress until it eventually got on where they wanted to go. But it took a long time. That's the typical approach. Nothing, nothing wrong with it, um, but I reckon there's a better way. You know, I'd be challenging everybody, is there a better way? Because if there's a better way that makes it happen sooner, let's get on with it. Now, of course, I'm going to suggest that the plan equipment wellness thinking and some of the tools uh, might, might be useful having to have a look at. So yeah, um, this is, uh, I guess, uh, again, a one pager of plant wellness and the concept of not having defects that become problems. We don't want to fix things. We, don't, we want to have things that are always healthy and well and then have no reason to fail. From all that, we get a, a wonderful workplace, a wonderful performance, happy people, a growing business, if we're in the right market and our clients want our product, um, and then that transfers into a, a blooming business. So if, we, if this is the aim, if this is the, our vision for the future, then we're going to get there very, very fast, not take four, five, six, seven years to get there. Again, our, our previous model um, is, is where the world is. The rat race is, is there. It's, it's around us all the time. The plant wellness program is a different focus. We are looking at what is causing the failure at the very beginning. We're not trying to improve business processes. Now, these guys here are working on their business process, trying to improve the process, hoping that by improving the process, they'll work. They're starting up here, making the changes at this level in the company, hoping 
Fingers crossed that this is good because that's what they told me to do in the books. Or the, the guru came in and said, oh, you've got to, yeah, got to do, improve your planning. So they begin up here, hoping um, it'll produce results. Of course it does because they learn from their mistakes uh, and, and they'll find the root cause eventually. But I don't want to wait all that long. So we're going to focus on why thing breaks in the first place. We're going to go back to the drawings. Look at the parts in the machine. Where's the stress coming from? Why is this bearing failing in three months? A bearing should last 10 years. Should last Designed to last 10 years trouble free. If my bearings are not lasting 10 years, then I am doing something to them to make them fail. Where's the stress coming from? Operating practices, maintenance practices, bad selection. You know, that bearing, that was made in a, in, in a Bangladesh. You know, they don't have very good steels there. Mm. You mean the supply guy's got a real bargain on this bearing and the bargain was in fact got broke the machine? Yeah, you pay another 10 bucks for that bearing and will last a lot longer. You know, that's a life cycle issue. Now it isn't a maintenance, that bearing's failing because somebody in, product, in, in stores chose a, a low cost bearing made of inferior materials. And maintenance is just repairing the breakdown that keeps coming around because somebody in stores tried to minimise the store's cost and not minimise the business profit. So life cycle and business-wide thinking is vital. I can't have the guys in marketing or stores or, uh, or finance destroy the machines by their choices, which they will do because they don't understand the total system they're working with. This is a business system. What the CEO does up here will destroy the machines down there. Because if he drives the wrong thinking, the wrong actions, thinking it's okay, he'll fail the machines. And he failed them. And my guys just repair them. But he failed them. So the system thinking is vital. So I want to go back to you know, what breaks the machines and human error. Now, human error is 80% of the problem. How do I stop human error? Well, gee, let's write some procedures of the one best way to do it. Great, I will solve 80% of that 80% of the problem by doing that. Now, if the guy doesn't know, doesn't have the capacity to do the work properly, I have two choices. Either I bring him up to be able to do it, or if he can't do the job, I get him a job that he can do very well and replace him with a guy that can do the requirements of what these tasks uh, uh, need us to do. So we're going to upskill our guys to the best practices. We know already from series system property number three, now we had our little cloud here. You know, get the best practice in immediately. Don't fiddle about. The best practice is the best because it gives the best results. Why are you waiting? So yeah, in a matter of 12 months, this approach here, you will have the place running ahead. In two years, you'll be leaving the competitors behind. And in three years, well, you'll be so far out that the world's wondering, how can you do that so well, so quickly? because you're focusing on what's important. It's important here. The processes I'm going to change will improve the stress, reduce the stress of my parts, make my people understand and work better. And that's why we work back up the, up the triangle. That's why I've got to start here. I don't know what I need to do. From up here, I just hope the guys understand, which they can never do that. Here, I know exactly what I have to do and now I build a process to deliver that every single time because I know what the right thing to do is.